Familiar slogans from the Arab Spring are now echoing across Sudan. Peaceful, peaceful, they cry, their hands raised and empty of weapons. This was in the capital Khartoum, but for the last 10 days, protests have erupted across the country. Demonstrations first broke out in the provincial city of Atbara, triggered by the rising cost of fuel and food. But the people soon turned on symbols of the ruling party and dictatorial president Omar al-Bashir, who's held power for 30 years. And there were unprecedented scenes when President Bashir's motorcade, with him inside it, was openly jeered by crowds of Sudanese who seemed to have lost all fear. The response from the state has been predictably brutal. The police, intelligence agencies and the army have all been in action, bringing with them beatings. <laughs> Mass arrests, tear gassing, <laughs> live ammunition and multiple casualties. Up to 40 people are thought to have died. And the state is now deploying a full spectrum of repression, including groups that have been described as death squads. But unfortunately, there is evidence that there is some other uh, unknown group affiliated to the government. Some of them are wearing police uniform. Okay? Some of them are wearing civilian clothes, engaged in the shooting of the uh, protesters. Despite the forces arrayed against them, the protests haven't stopped. Instead, they've spread across all sectors of society. These pictures show Sudanese doctors joining the rallies. President Bashir himself remained defiant. On Christmas Day, he appeared on state TV denouncing the demonstrators as foreign stooges and infidels. As you know, we are under blockade by the West. We're under siege. So I salute you and I thank you for this reception, which is the perfect answer to all the collaborators and the traitors and the mercenaries. But yesterday, at Friday prayers, President Bashir was again heckled as he was leaving mosque. The capital city has now been flooded with loyalist troops and militia, many seemingly equipped for war. The streets of Khartoum seem calm today when there are armed forces and undercover security agents deployed all across the city. We can't film anything openly without risking arrest or assault. We nearly just got caught a second ago. The government isn't backing down, and neither are the protesters. With more nationwide demonstrations planned for Monday, Sudan is now caught in a critical and dangerous moment in its history. Well, I'm joined now by Amjad Farid, who's spokesman for Sudan Change Now, a group which campaigns for democratic reform in Sudan. Thanks for being with us. Um, let's pick up on the final thought of that report, though. This does seem genuinely a sustained protest, not just in the capital, a significant moment. Yeah, this is uh, started for entering the, its 10th day today, it starting on the 19th of December uh, in the city of Adbara and joined by other cities in the same days. It was a cardinal symptom of that protesters uh, marched and rallied spontaneously to burn the offices of the NCB. It seems uh, the end of three decades of corruption and dictatorship and mismanagement. That but do, to does that. it seem that? I mean, it's built in some quarters as simply a protest against a hike in fuel prices and foodstuffs. 
more to it than that, you would say? The economic crisis itself is political in nature. Uh, the grand corruption that led to uh, the current economic fall down of Sudan is going up in the hierarchy of the ruling regime, reaching up to the brothers of uh, Bashir and the family, and the family of the prime minister, Mu'taz Musa. And in the three decades, in the last three decades, the lack of accountability have led to unprecedented uh, corruption that led to this. And there was no check on balance and of, of anything. Indeed, but yet the response on the streets we're seeing there, the use of live ammunition, the allegations that there are hit squads, death squads roving the streets. Um, perhaps the president feels he can tough it out. He can do a, a President al-Assad in Syria. The president, Bashir, tried this several times over the last three decades. He tried killing people in September 20, uh, 2013. He killed more than 200 civil peaceful protesters for similar reasons in less than two weeks of protest. So, so why is this different? Because you genuinely sense that it is. Because it is expanding everywhere, even in the strongholds of, uh, of the Bashir supporter, even in areas like Shendi and states like, uh, like River Nile, which uh, none of being supporting to, to the regime. And uh, this tells you something, that 15 states uh, out of the 18 Sudanese states are now taking the streets for continu continuously for more than 10 days. And genuinely, you think it's a spontaneous populist uprising rather than something that's orchestrated by political opposition? Not that there's anything wrong, in, in a sense, with that happening. The political opposition have all the right to, uh, to protest against uh, three decades of dictatorship, as I said. But this time, this was not called by any uh, by any uh, organized uh, entity. However, the professional unions have called for a big march that took place on the 25th right. in Khartoum and which continued for all, it took all the day and some time of the evening as well. Sure, and it's, on, it's ongoing. I'm Jeff Farid. We'll have to leave it there. Thanks very much for coming in.